What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, and I'm back with another video, man. And you already know what I need you to do. Hit the subscribe, hit the like, hit the notification bell, because it does go a long way with helping out the channel. Listen, if this is your first time, I already know why you're here. You're tired of releasing on your keyboards, your laptops, and your desktops, and you're tired of being manipulated and dominated by female culture. You are in the right place, man. I'm excited about this video. But before we get started, man, listen, if you want the free ebook, it is in the comments pinned to the top. You can give a donation if you want. I would appreciate it, but you do not have to send me one penny. Just follow the instructions and I will send you the ebook of how to get free from masturbation. Um, this book is powerful, man. Um, I've been getting great reviews and I want you to have it free of charge. So um, without further ado, let's get into this video. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. This is important, man, when you're walking on semen retention. This is important when you're walking with God, because when you begin to walk with God, God is going to start showing you and revealing to you who your enemies are. The Bible says in Micah, Chapter seven, verse five, it says, do not trust a neighbor. Put no confidence in a friend. What does it mean by putting no confidence in a friend? It basically means have low expectations, man. Don't expect that friend to return the same type of morals and principles that you live and abide by. You can't expect people to have your same moral basis because if you do you will be disappointed you will be cheated you will be taken advantage of and by the time you realize it a lot of damage has already taken place keep your friends close but your enemies closer why do you want to keep your enemies closer than your friends because your enemies will provide you with valuable information that your friends will not your enemies will push you to be a better person, to be a better version of yourself. Your enemies will cause you to sharpen your skills. Your enemies will cause you to start looking with a God's eye view. Your enemies, your enemies will sharpen your tools. Keep your friends close, man, but keep your enemies closer. Here's what you have to understand about enemies. In order to have enemies, man, you have to be doing something good. You have to be a threat. If you're not a threat, you're not going to have any enemies. If you're a threat in the workplace, if you're a threat in life, if you're a threat in any shape, form or fashion, you will have enemies. And especially if you serve the most high God, you will have enemies enemies you will have enemies i know you want to be a peaceful guy we all do but you have to be in the know you can't be naive you have to understand that your enemies are out to destroy you they're out to knock you off the chosen path that god has chosen for you they are there to make sure you do not succeed they are there to elevate over you to exalt over you they are there to put you to shame. And if you are not on your A game, you will fail miserably when it comes to your enemies. See, friends keep you comfortable. Enemies get you out of your comfort zone. Enemies is what's going to cause you to elevate in ways that you never thought possible. Why? Because they keep the pressure on you. They never let up. They are they are foolish in their attempts to destroy you. They are irrational. They, they can see themselves losing the battle. They can care less. They will keep coming. And that pressure of your enemies constantly marching upon you is what's going to cause you to get better. Is what's going to cause you to get closer to God. And God is going to reveal who these people are. He's going to reveal who these enemies are in the workplace. He's going to reveal who these enemies are in your own 
family, your friends. He's going to show you your friends are really frenemies. They really don't want to see you elevate. They really don't want to see you shine. They really want to see your downfall. They've always been envious and jealous of you for whatever reason. Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Your friends can't do you much good. Your enemies will take you to new heights you've never experienced. Why? Because God will use your enemies to exalt you. Not your friends. He will use your enemies to exalt you. And when you start doing something as particular has semen retention, when you really begin to have that God focus, when you really begin to see the wickedness of masturbation, the wickedness of sexual immorality, the wickedness of pornography, and you really begin to uh, contort your life to the purposes of God. Your enemies will come out the woodworks. Demons will begin to attack you. They will begin to visit you. They will begin to appear in people, in females, in men, in family members. Why? To get you frustrated, to get you off of your course. Because here's what happens. I need you to pay attention and listen because I don't want you to miss this. When you turn away from sin, when you turn away from masturbation, when you turn away from pornography, sexual immorality and all these things, the enemy knows, the devil knows, demons know. Now you are on the right track to fulfill your destiny. God has a destiny for you. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. There is a task that you have been um that you have been, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a task that God has for you. And that task is going to be for the building of his kingdom, the expansion of his kingdom. And once you rid yourself of masturbation, these low level vibrations, sexual immorality, fornication, adultery. Once you rid yourself of these evil vices, these evil spirits, now you can begin to operate. And the power and the anointing that God is for your life, that anointing, that power is going to be for you to overcome all of your enemies and to complete God's mission for your life. As long as you're masturbating and watching porn, as long as you're doing all these different things, the enemy knows that you can't achieve your destiny. He knows that you can't expand the kingdom of God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. So the first thing you have to do is seek the kingdom of God. You got to rid yourself. You have to die to yourself and submit to the will of God. Once you begin to do that, the spiritual forces will unleash against you. The spiritual forces will come after you because there's going to be. Um, an alert in the spirit world. There's going to be a, a sounding signal. Oh, he's changing his ways. He's not moving the same way. He, he stopped talking to the, the, to the person that we put in his pathway to destroy him. Oh, God is giving him dreams. God is giving him visions, right? God is exposing the people in his life that are a detriment to him and not a benefit or a value. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. You got to expect when you begin to follow Christ. Hamashiach. You will see who your enemies are and God is warning you and preparing you and showing you how to move. He's showing you in your dreams. He's showing you in your actions. He's giving you confirmation. He's allowing you to see the sketchy comments they make. He's allowing you to see past the facade. And you have to take these cues, these warnings, this spiritual insight. It's valuable information. It's a military battle that you're on, guys. And every piece of intel is important. No matter how small it may seem, every piece of intel from God is important. And if you don't take advantage of that intel, you are going to stumble and you are going to fall. 
Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Just realize this. If you have enemies, man, you are on the right track. It's because you're a threat. You're a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You are a threat to Satan's plans for your life. His only plan is to kill, steal, and destroy your destiny. He's to make sure that when you stand before God that you didn't produce. You didn't make a return on the investment. We, we, we read the parable of the three men, the one who got the one talent, the one who got the five, and the two and the five, right? Two men made an investment on what God gave them, the return on that investment. The one man, he didn't do anything. He gave back to God what God gave him. And the Bible says that man was wicked. And the Lord took what he had and gave it to the, to the, to the man who had made a profit. Don't allow your gifts, your talents to go to waste. Know who your enemies are. Know that when, you, when your enemies are revealed, that you are on the right track. Be encouraged. Read about King David. Read about Saul, how Saul pursued David day and night. He kept trying to kill David. And David was like, bro, the Lord is with me, bro. Why you keep coming at me? He kept coming at David, but he kept failing. He kept failing. And David was in positions to kill Saul several times, but spared his life. And even with that information that Saul had, that David spared his life, Saul still continued to pursue him. And the only thing that happened is his wives were given to David and Saul killed himself. Your enemies will go mad trying to pursue you. They will go mad trying to pursue you and they will get irrational in their pursuit because they can sense, they can see God all over you. And they don't know what to do. Their pride keeps them persistent in their pursuit of you. Just like Saul failed to overcome David, just like David's son Absalom failed to overcome him, so will your enemies fall. Your enemies will fall like Saul. Your enemies will fall like Absalom. Be encouraged. This is Holman Us Podcast, man. I hope you got value to this video. I'm going to holler at you in the next one. Peace.